Got a special guest in studio. I mean, I knew who this guy was years ago. Ran into him at some JFK events. Uh, but I tell you, in the last year, getting to know Roger Stone, it's it's been amazing. He's a consummate Trump insider. He's a best-selling author. He's worked in nine administrations or for, on nine campaigns. I guess in like four uh, administrations, correct me if I'm wrong. And, of course, famously good buddies with Richard Nixon. And I tell you, you look at Richard Nixon, where are the good old days? That guy's so-called corruption was like child's play. Uh, and I'm not defending it, obviously. You've written a book that's somewhat critical of him, but also positive. He was a real guy. Uh, what is the difference, Roger Stone, between a Richard Nixon and, say, a Hillary or Bill Clinton or an Obama? Because you've got a bunch of breaking news, a bunch of inside stuff. We've got a ton of anti-Trump rioters beating up women, uh, hitting them over the head with Mexican flags, and the mayor defending it is wonderful. I mean, these people seem like the real brown shirt fascists to me. I want to cover that today with you and, and, and all the points you want to get to. But first off, let's quantify your 40-something years in politics and your business partner, you, you know, being one of the top uh, folks right now, uh, heading up the Trump campaign a year ago or so. You were the head of the Trump campaign. Now you're out there on your own to defend the republic. Uh, but 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 so much. Where are we as a culture, as a society, and how would you parallel it between a Richard Milhouse Nixon and a Hillary Rodham Clinton? What type of individuals are these? I mean, was was Nixon a sociopath or a psychopath? We know Hillary is. Well, put it this way: Hillary and Bill Clinton make Richard Nixon look like Saint Thomas Aquinas. I mean, the unconstitutional uh, abuses of power by both the Clintons. Uh, and the Obamas pale in comparison to anything Richard Nixon did. Let's take a simple example. Uh, one of the counts of impeachment against Richard Nixon was, uh, was that he misused the IRS. Really? Kathleen Willey, Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones, they all got IRS audits. All the women sexually assaulted by Bill Clinton got IRS audits. Uh, but there was never an article of impeachment on the Clintons. The extra constitutional uh, 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 ravings and orders of Barack Obama uh, pale in comparison in anything Richard Nixon did. Uh, it shows that there's a diff there's a double standard between conservative Republicans and liberal Democrats. Republicans are held to a higher standard. And it seems to be getting worse. I, I know you flew in last night, but you've seen some of the news today. We covered it last hour. You have left-wing editors of newspapers. You have the mayor out there in the town where this just happened, where Breitbart and, and of course, our own reporters are there having events, and they're coming in and beating up women now on TV, waving Mexican flags in San Jose, and the media is saying this is a good thing. Now, this is unprecedented. Yeah, I actually think, uh, and Pat Buchanan wrote this last week very eloquently, all these demonstrations, all this violence is only going to redound to the benefit of Donald Trump. Uh, the lines are drawn in America between the producers and the takers. Uh, and the more they foment violence, and let's be very clear, this violence is agate prop. It's paid for. It's orchestrated. It, it's a faux demonstration. These are hardline professional agitators financed by George Soros, MoveOn.org, Black Lives Matter, David Brock and the and the and the freaks at uh, at Media Matters for America. Then go out and interpret it, blaming all of the violence on Trump. Hardworking blue collar Americans see this violence. And they repair to the Trump banner. In my view, the entire thing will backfire. I agree. And it's on record in Europe, the tactics, bully and attack, and then shut down conservatives or patriots' speech, nationalist speech. It's the same mode here. It's the same leftist blueprint with big corporations that want monopolies funding it. But it is backfiring all over the world. So then I ask, what is George Soros and Hillary Clinton, what are they thinking? I think it's just a, it's a miscalculation. Here is what they're trying to do. There is a morbid fear on the left that many of the Bernie Sanders voters uh, are going to wise up to the fact that the internationalist globalist trade deals like NAFTA have destroyed the job market in the United States and that the neocon policies of both the Clintons and the Bushes have driven us all off to to endless uh, and pointless war. They're deathly afraid that one third, not the hard left, but one third of the Sanders voters will become available to Trump. 
And therefore, these these riots, these these attacks, he's a racist, he's a bigot, he's a maniac, he's mentally unbalanced. That is meant to disqualify Trump among those voters. They are desperate to disqualify them because they are they're outsiders. These folks are natural Trump voters. We have common economic interests with them, and that is what they fear. He's in a dead heat or a few points ahead in most polls. You're the expert on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Where is the state of the battle? What's the path to victory, A? But, but B, clearly, uh, I don't need to be a political scientist to know that most people uh, out there you know, feel intimidated because they don't want to be called racist. But secretly, they're planning to vote for Trump because they're nationalists, they're patriots. And I'm talking about black voters, Hispanics, and others, because I'm suddenly seeing double, triple the numbers of Hispanics and, and, and African-American folks at the Trump rallies. Because we have the live feeds. Our crew is at almost all of these. Infowars.com is covering it. And I'm not seeing that on the news now. They're not doing close-up shots of the lines anymore because it's freaking the media out. And now suddenly, in multiple speeches, when Obama talks about Trump, he turns into a blithering idiot, and, and I think he, he's got him and the people have him completely rattled right now. Yeah, I think what's happening here is that the the uh, you have a well-oiled political machine run by the Clintons, uh, and it is uh, it is extremely well funded. Just the super PACs supporting Hillary have raised eighty five million and have another forty eight million dollars on hand. Uh, Compare that with the Trump organization and the Trump campaign. This is an entirely indigenous, grassroots, guerrilla campaign. Trump has managed to get nominated without polling, without sophisticated analytics and targeting, uh, without uh, massive hundreds of millions of dollars worth of both positive and negative TV commercials. This is, it's an uprising. It's a citizen insurgency, uh, and it's going to take on the best oiled best funded political operation probably in American history. Uh, an operation that was, has been very successful at controlling the narrative because of their close associates uh, association uh, and their simpatico views with the mainstream media. Uh, Trump is, be able, is able, because he's going to be the nominee, to break through all of that. So uh, would Marco Rubio or Chris Christie or, or any of these other candidates Called Hillary Clinton a crook? No, only Donald Trump has the cojones to do that. In fact, we've got that queued up. Uh, I've already, I don't normally play a clip five or six times during a broadcast, but Trump, the clip's up on Infowars.com. Uh, Steve Watson wrote an article about it. Spread this out to everybody. Hillary Clinton has to go to jail. She's guilty as hell. By the way, Hillary Clinton is missing 30,000 emails. They've been deleted. 30,000. 30,000 emails. And remember I said I was a counterpuncher? I am. After what she said about me today in her phony speech, that was a phony speech. That was a Donald Trump pitch up. I will say this, Hillary Clinton has to go to jail, okay? She has to go to jail. To go. <laughs> I'm gonna play more of it. This is unprecedented in modern politics. Job. This is the end of an era, folks. This is, She's even guilty if Trump as hell. Win, this brings him down. Remember, Hillary Clinton used to hate Obama. She used to hate him. Bill Clinton hated him. Bill Clinton hated him. He called Bill Clinton a racist. Do you remember that? Bill Clinton hated him. All right. And Hillary Clinton hated Obama. Now it's, yes, sir, Mr. President, <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. What would you like? What would you like me to say here, sir? The only reason she's behaving like this and the only reason she's been dragged so far left, believe me, is she doesn't want to go to jail over the emails, okay? Believe me. That's, that's the it. only reason. 30,000 of them. One simple reason. That's good. I, I mean, this is coffin nails. Uh, this is unprecedented. And, and, and look, my gut told me Trump was good over a year ago. That's why I've been supporting him. But now I'm so proud I'm supporting him because I can tell he is for real. He has gotten so serious. It's not even a joke now, and the numbers are going up. You've known this guy for 40-plus years. You don't talk about your private you know, relationship with him, but you've been his wingman, you name it, when he's not married. You know, you're buddies. You've know, not just been in business together. Um, they're saying on Bill Maher that he's dumbing it down for the public. Well, no, I mean, I think he's just simplifying it to cut through the garbage. But who, who is the real Donald Trump? Is this the real Donald Trump?
Yeah, he, he's blunt. He's he's plain spoken. He talks the way regular people talk. He doesn't talk the way politicians talk after their advisors say, oh, no, you need to say this or you need to say that or the poll shows this or the focus groups show that. See, that's that's Hillary. It comes across exactly what it is. Phony, totally phony. You can see the way she calibrates her speech. There's nothing sincere. There's nothing real. It's whatever her advisors have told her to say that day. Dangerous Donald. How many times did they did they poll that? Did they compare it to duplicitous Donald and see which one is better? <laughs> I mean, look, and by the way, what's this thing now? Where if she's in Kentucky, she talks like that. If she's in Texas, it's so. Or if she talks to Hispanics, she talks with this fake Hispanic accent. And then now I've seen these videos. There, in fact, I meant to grab them last night and tell the crew. I saw her in a speech going like a robot with her arms out, and she goes. And like opens her eyes up real big to look like menacing and goes, I mean, she looks like a freaking lunatic, man. What is going on with her? Uh, I don't think her health is good. I don't think she has the stamina for the campaign. They're, they put her on speed or something, and, didn't they? And these, and these carefully calibrated, uber-planned, over-planned, uh, uh, modern campaign doesn't know how to deal with the fee, with the free floating spirit of Donald Trump, Trump it w is unhandled. Is that why Obama seems like he's he's really they're, they're, jolted? They're, they're flummoxed because the only thing predictable about Donald Trump is that he is completely unpredictable, and they don't know where he's going to come. So he's right. Thirty thousand emails, emails that would show you the nexus between the Clinton Foundation and the and the Clinton State Department, and demonstrate that everything everything was for sale. You need approval for an arms deal. You need uh, to corner the market on U.S. uranium. You need you need a, a foreign policy change to get rid of Gaddafi so you can move in on the oil. Just grease Bill and Hillary. That's all you got to do. Absolutely. Roger Stone's our guest. or He's readjusting his earpiece there for TV, which reminds me to tell everybody, we're not just radio. We're also television. Infowars.com forward slash show and more and more cable and TV stations around the country are picking us up. Buckley's been out to some big events with some uh, big networks and we're going to be on a lot of other affiliates here in the new future. Some big announcements as well because liberty is so popular and Donald Trump knows he's riding that populist wave. This is happening in other places in the world. That's what's so exciting. Uh, and, and the establishment's going to have real trouble putting putting this back in the bottle, as I've said so many times. Uh, so, Roger, what else do we have to look for? Will they try to st steal the nomination uh, at the RNC in Cleveland, or is that pretty much dead now? Uh, I don't think there will be an effort there. I think you've got some bitter enders who are still loyal to Ted Cruz. But the Trump folks now, and Paul Manafort, who is the consummate convention operative, they have firm control of the Rules Committee, of the Platform Committee, of the Credentials Committee now. So I think mischief at the, at the convention is unlikely. I'm looking forward to a very, very conservative platform. I don't see us having big platform fights. I'll tell you what the problem is in Cleveland right now, and you know this. We, uh, originally starting as a Stop the Steel rally, applied for a permit for a giant outdoor rally. Uh, and it has now been almost two months since we have applied for our permit. Now, suddenly, uh, the city of Cleveland is coming back and telling us they have guidelines. The guidelines are meant to censor us. The bottom line is they don't want this peaceful rally to happen. Uh, what's ironic, of course, is that in our dealings with the Cleveland police, they all say, look, I'm being told I have to tell you this, but we love Trump. I'm sorry, you can't have your rally. I mean, it's it is it is ironic. But meanwhile, the 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 Hillary people can run around and attack women and burn well, things down. They, they don't apply for permits. They don't check in with the police. They just show up and start swinging. So, um, well, I'm here to tell Cleveland though. I'm going there regardless. I got a First Amendment, especially when they try to steal this nomination. They're gonna have all those communists running around. And so, what do we do? I guess we got to follow a lawsuit because well, because look. I mean, look, they're gonna, uh, tell, let me guess the guidelines, Roger. They're going to make us be like five miles away in a ditch where nobody can see us or what? Uh, it, it, it's unclear. Uh, the the gentleman who is organizing this, Tim Salati Sr., a real patriot, uh, locked in conversations with the city of Cleveland, uh, trying to get to the bottom line. This rally is happening. Oh, folks. yeah, folks, come there, be there. You know there's going to be shenanigans. We just need to be there regardless. Absolutely. And, and it's at Because number we try to get the permits. We try to do it all. But when they try to say no... We don't need that for a rally unless it's blocking roads. We're just going to pick some park and be there. Yeah, uh, look, the point here, of course, is numbers. 
We need to show the numbers. We need to show the force of Trump in numbers. And by the way, by the way, you know, the police all over the country are ordered to let leftists attack people and stand down. Uh, imagine the image of the cops try to stop us, but let the communists run around. That's going to look. The only way we lose is not showing up. Resistance is victory. We've got to engage. Yeah, I agree with that. I also don't think that the Cleveland police are going to do this. If we are permitted, they will have an obligation to protect the gathering from violence, which is why we... Well, sure, it's going to be Black Lives Matter and communists out there that want them dead, so they better support the First Amendment. No, look, I, I think we may end up having to put pressure on the city of Cleveland to preserve our First Amendment rights and our, and our, our rights to be heard. All right, Roger Stone, we're going to break in a moment. You have got a bunch of stuff we're going to be going over. We'll also be up on the phones up. Whole nother hour with Roger Stone, a bunch of Trump clips, a bunch of world news. It is a wild time to be alive. Briefly, briefly, you heard him plug it without me... Pushing him to do it. I, I didn't even know he was buying our products. I actually went and looked at our computer. Certainly enough, he's been buying uh, the liver shield, a bunch of other stuff. So thank you for the support. Brain Force is one of the top nootropics out there. It's only been out two years. Third-party sites. It, it, we just take the best known 10 ingredients and put them in there at a low price, high-quality organic. Go check it out for yourself. This is natural. This is healthy. Uh, I wouldn't take too many of these, though, or you'll bounce off the walls. It's amazing. Brain Force and your purchase supports the broadcast, InfoWarsLife.com. And we're running a 20% off on lung cleanse that is upwards of 20 concentrated herbs uh, and essential oils that just coats the larynx and the throat. Whether it's a sore throat or you've got you know issues with, with speech like I do sometimes from talking so much, you sign up for auto shipping at 10% off. $50 off on orders uh, or, or free shipping on $50 or more orders. I'm teleprompter free, folks. And 20% uh, off right now on Lung Cleanse. It will sell out by Monday uh, because uh, the supplies are limited. But I do a special a few times a year when allergy season gets real bad. So Lung Cleanse available at InfoWarsLife.com right now. And it is your purchase, obviously, of these great products that makes the broadcast possible. Also, check out our great family of high-quality Water filters at InfoWarsStore.com, Hillary for Prison Search, and so much more, and help support the InfoWar. Roger Stone is our guest. By the way, he's such a trooper, and I'm not kissing his rear end here, but getting to know this guy. He was flying in at 11 last night because he had to work on stuff till 8, battling for this republic. Then, because of summer storms, the flight got bumped to 2.30 in the morning. What time did you uh, land at Austin Bergstrom? Uh, we actually ended up having to abort after waiting at the airport all night. We flew in this morning, making it by the skin of our teeth. So I spent the night in the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport on my uh, on my iPad. Well, I tell you, you're amazing. So so happy to be here. We want you to rest some this weekend. You're flying out Saturday night because you're speaking Sunday at a Trump rally. That's correct. I'm speaking to a Trump rally in Deerfield Beach on Sunday. There's about 400, 500 people expected, uh, and uh, I'm honored to be the main speaker. So I will be there. Absolutely. Uh, listen, you're going to break some big news, but we just tweeted it. I want to give people more time to, 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 to tune in on the Chris Christie front uh, because this is important. We're going to talk VP uh, and, and a bunch of other issues. And I know you like to take questions. So I usually make folks hold for 30 minutes and then, you know, babble. We're going to take like 20 phone calls coming up at about 20 after, 24 after when we come back in next hour at 800 259 9231. 800 259 9231. We're opening the phones up, but for first-time callers for Roger Stone or witnesses to the social justice warriors going crazy, rampaging, and attacking free speech all over. So let's do that coming up at the start of the next hour on the Chris Christie front uh, on other issues. How is Donald Trump doing? He looks more energized than ever uh, on television, and he's really taking the gloves off. Is that because, well, like he told us, because Hillary's been lying about him? Well, I, first of all, I think he's enjoying California. Second of all, a number of people have said, well, why is he spending so much time in California? California is probably not one of the states up for grabs in the general election. Actually, I think his being there is brilliant. He's exacerbating the divisions between Bernie Sanders and Hillary, punching Hillary every day. He knows Sanders cannot be nominated, will not be nominated, although uh, he is giving the, the Clinton folks fits. So he is out there pouring gasoline on that division with an eye towards winning a third of the... I was about to say, if I was advising Trump, I'd say live there to show the communists and people with foreign flags beating up women. Every time he does this, he just goes up in the polls. Yeah, it, it has worked. So he's running a national campaign. He's not in California 
because California is necessarily in play, although I wouldn't write it off, not quite yet, but it's a national campaign. Doesn't matter where you are in the United States today, because of mass media, your message is, is nationwide. It doesn't matter geographically where you are. Wow. Uh, obviously, Sanders will probably throw his weight behind Hillary. Do you think she might pick him as VP? I think that I think that's highly un unlikely. Yesterday, it was interesting because, as you saw, Hillary attacked Trump about Trump University. Trump University uh, is a, is a real estate course uh, that uh, Trump uh, uh, sponsored, uh, and as you may know, uh, left wing Attorney General Eric Schneiderman of New York uh, has advanced this case because a small number of students at Trump University were dissatisfied with the results. Doesn't it have like a 98% approval rating? 98% approval rating. Now, Schneiderman first met with Donald Trump and with his daughter Ivanka and tried to shake them down. In essence said directly, if I got some big campaign contributions, I would drop this matter. Trump knew that was illegal and he declined. Uh, and that was probably a setup, too. Uh, and Schneiderman has proceeded with the case. Here's the irony, and that is Trump University is nothing compared to a Clinton scandal entitled Laureate Education. Laureate Education was a, what is a chain of universities, or I should say colleges uh, and schools nationwide, uh, was taken private by a friend of Bill, Stevie Cohen, uh, turned out to be a financial disaster, so they brought in Bill Hold Clinton. on, stay right there. Uh, we're going to come back and expose this scandal, then the Chris Christie thing. You're about to hear it here first, and so much more. Third hour, tell friends and family, neighbors, retweet. Uh, uh, folks, you to need to tune in. This is important. Stay with us. Visit GCNlive.com today. Stonezone.com is just website, by the way. We are back live, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Roger Stone is our guest in studio. He tried for 12 hours to get her and finally got off the got off the ground this morning and got to Austin, Texas. So he's here with thestonezone.com. Uh, in fact, we, guys, uh, they're in my office. Will somebody haul in both his new best-selling books on the Clintons uh, and, of course, on the Bushes? Because this is this 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 continuity is important to understand just how evil they are. This isn't tit for tat politically. The Clintons robbing foundations, robbing Haitian funds, you know, keeping most of the money, paying for their jets, their homes. These are horrible, nasty people, not just Benghazi or email gate. But you were just getting uh, into this other university chain the Clintons are really involved in that is a scam. But listen, at least with real estate schools, you learn some real stuff, but you get out of it, you know, what you put into it. Uh, so sour grapes with leftist losers Running around like the biggest story on earth is Donald Trump. Some people didn't like the classes they took. I mean, that's their problem. I am so sick of you. Meanwhile, mainline education is almost completely worthless now. You spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on it and learn how to be a social justice warrior. Uh, so tell us uh, about this university sure. scandal. I have a piece up right now at Daily Caller uh, about this. Laureate University is a Clinton scam. Uh, basically, it was a failing chain of, of private schools. They paid Bill Clinton $16 million in 2010. They didn't disclose that until 2015. It was hidden. Clinton managed for them to get $150 million from the International Finance Corporation. Good Lord. Uh, the, obviously, they never went, they never qualified for their IPO. Clinton and the friends of Bill on Wall Street, KKR, Goldman Sachs, Stevie Cohen, they made a killing. Uh, the students didn't do so well. This pales in comparison to Trump University. Well, this is unprecedented, 150 mil. We're talking billions in this foundation of every scam you can imagine. Anybody else got that so-called money and then just took it would go to prison. Yeah, this was a stunning interview you just did with my friend Peter Schweitzer, whose book is terrific and much of which is recapped with attribution in my book uh, with some new information because I came and published several months after Peter. Uh, the Clinton Foundation is the largest single money laundering scheme in U.S. criminal history. So they make Bernie Madoff look like a good boy. A piker. This is a $2 billion global financial fraud. All of their filings with the individual states, with the IRS, uh, by the way, the state attorney generals regulate charities. All of their filings are permeated with fraud and partial information. Why no Republican attorney general 
has yet opened an investigation into the Clinton Foundation is beyond me. Why the IRS is auditing Donald Trump's taxes, but not investigating the Clinton Foundation, over which well, they we know have received why. hundreds. It's too big to fail. The, right. I mean, they've got so many other people involved in the scam, they want to cover it up. But I mean, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. It's, it's the Achilles heel, though. If there are three issues for Donald Trump, they're very simple. The Clinton's epic abuse of women, the fact that Bill sexually assaulted dozens of women and that Hillary then threatened and intimidated and bullied them into silence. Secondarily, her failure as Secretary of State, Benghazi, the email scandal, uh, and our failed foreign policy. And then thirdly is the epic stealing by Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea, the way they have enriched themselves uh, at the trough by trading governmental favors for giant speaking fees and contributions to their phony charity. One, two, three. That's how you beat Hillary Clinton. That is the one, two, three knockout crescendo or trifecta. When we return, the latest on the Chris Christie situation, you're about to hear it here first, um, the fall of Chris Christie. Why is this important? Well, we'll tell you straight ahead with breaking news with Roger Stone. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com. Roger Stone is our guest, StoneZone.com, and he is here in Austin, Texas, to be in studio with us so the TV audience can also have the pleasure of him uh, being with us. We're also going to talk campaign, talk Cleveland, talk the different strategies that are coming up there. StoneZone.com is his website, and I tell you, I know it's been Stone in there and others advising Trump, but Trump's his own man, to take the gloves off, go full bore, and absolutely, you know, uh, attack the system and whether it's 9-11 truth and the 28 pages or whether it's uh, the Clintons abusing women uh, or whether it is them selling out to, to, to foreign countries. I've seen Trump some lately talk about the communist Chinese and how Hillary gets money from him recently. But man, Laura Allen Hughes, her and Bill would allow the transfer of Merv technology, boost technology uh, re-entry technology that took a Chinese rocket program because the Russians wouldn't give them ICBMs. Russia and China hate each other, you know, more than you know we think. In fact, more than China and Russia have issues. Something, with us. something Dick Nixon figured out. Go ahead. Well, you're the expert. Yeah, well, tell us about that. And they, uh, the Clintons gave. Uh, and there was almost an overthrow by the Pentagon of them at the time. By the way, gave them the Panama Canal, gave them most of our deep water ports, and gave them the missile secrets to destroy the United States. China could not do it. And and, and, and talk about sick, and we're going to break the big news here. When I went and saw the Martian with the anti-gun creature, Matt Damon, in the movie, they say, thank God we don't have good uh, technology, and the Russians don't either. Thank God our rockets are Chinese. Thank you for getting us to Mars and saving Matt Damon. I, I mean, inverted and pull-up bureaus with red flags flapping. All this foreign money is controlling Hollywood, you name it, and now they have this EU commission which runs things. It's a dictatorship saying we're going to have an Internet ID. They're coming after the free speech. We'll talk about that next, but just the history. You've got to promise sometime when you're not just battling, you know, for the Trump campaign, to the history with Nixon, all the stuff you saw. So just 60 seconds on Nixon, then we'll get into Chris Christie. Well, I think you made an excellent point, which is Nixon figured out that the Russians and the Chinese could be played off against each other. That's how we got a SALT agreement to limit nuclear weapons. It's how we got the opening to China. They were more concerned about each other. This is the kind of president we need, somebody who puts America's interests first and figures out how to play our enemies off against each other. Now, let's go to the Christie uh, situation. As you know... Uh, a federal judge has ruled uh, that a list of uh, unindicted co-conspirators uh, in the George Washington Bridge closing matter be released. Somebody, calling himself John Doe, has appealed to the court to try to block, block release of those documents. Uh, that hearing is coming up today, I believe. My sources, which are impeccable, tell me that there are, in fact, Two lists. One is a list of unindicted co-conspirators. The other is a list of public officials who knew in advance that the bridge would be closed and did nothing about it. Sources at the very top tell me that Governor Chris Christie is on the latter list, which, of course, would uh, be inconsistent with everything he has said publicly. So we need to watch that hearing very carefully. 
I think it is unlikely the judge is going to back off the release of these documents. And finally, the truth of Bridgegate will be known shortly. Do we think John Doe may be a corpulent governor that a, uh, resembles a hedgehog? There were some who thought that was the case. I think it is not so. I think it is someone, however, who works uh, for the governor, perhaps at the Port Authority, um, who would be on the latter list with the governor. Will that hurt Trump uh, because you know, Chris Christie's a supporter? Uh, you know, I think that it, the transference isn't really there. Uh, uh, obviously, Christie and Trump were competitors. Christie has been very supportive of Trump. He's been the one rhino Republican who has broken from the pack to come over from the never Trump crowd. But uh, I don't think anybody realistically thinks he's on the list for vice president. I don't want you to give out any you know, intel because you've got a great political brain, one of the best out there. It's admitted even by your enemies of any Achilles heels for Trump. But obviously they've thought about every heel. They've attacked every heel they think's there. I think the only heel is Trump himself if he doesn't stay hardcore and backs off. But that's not his nature. But the assassination card, other issues, this media is willing to push any hoax. They've already filed fake lawsuits about, you know, underage girls he raped. That was totally fake and admitted. Uh, that tells me, though, I mean, I'm, nobody's invincible, and I know you're not saying that. What do you worry about on the uh, on the belly of, of Trump? Are there any missing armored scales? Yeah, look, I, I don't think so. Uh, did he have gorgeous girlfriends in the period which he was not married? Absolutely. Did he play the field? Absolutely. There are no scandals. All this nonsense about David Brock and the folks at Media Matters America have reams and reams of unknown negative information. It's all crap. Here's the question. Why is the mainstream media asking about Trump University but not Laureate? Why are they asking Trump about how much he raised for uh, veterans to the penny but not asking about the Clinton Foundation? You have, uh, you have a, a, a double standard, and Trump has taken it on frontally in his attacks last week on the media for raising the question about how much he raised for veterans. We know exactly what it is. Five. 0.6 million, that's how much, with another 600,000 pledged and yet to be collected. In other words, the exact 6 million that Trump said it was months ago. And, this, and, and, this, and this is a hit job. They turn everything into something evil. He's at an event, he says, I have pledged from donors and myself 6 million, and then that's how pledging works, whether it's NPR or anything. Then you send the money, you call in and go, I pledge $500, they go, good. You get the coffee mug uh, and the sweater. And then you write the check. He says, I have six million pledged, and they turned that into deceit. Yes. Uh, look, it is, uh, we're, we're playing a, a game against a stacked deck. You're going to have a movement here, and I think everybody knows this, uh, and Trump called it when he said it was rape. The women are physically and sexually assaulted, raped, bitten by Bill Clinton, Kathleen Willey, uh, Juanita Broderick, Paula Jones, Christy Zercher, Sandra Allen James, uh, uh, Liz Ward Grayson, Eileen Wellstone, who may be found in Britain, the very first woman that uh, Bill Clinton raped when he was at Oxford. They are going to be speak, they're going to speak out. They're not going to be stifled and suppressed and threatened this time. And here's what will happen, Alex. There's going to be an attempt once again to discredit them. What do the Clintons always do? Attack the women. Attack the women. But this time, there's the internet and the new media that together is even more powerful than the whore media, uh, the Brian Williams, Katie Couric, Decepticon media. But they're going to say, oh, these women have been paid to say that. These women are ideologically motivated. These women are lying. No, folks. These women are telling the truth. They were browbeat. They were suppressed last time. They will not be. I can see TV ads where, where it shows Hillary and Bill denying it. And then cut to Clinton going, I did not have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> Look, their credibility is shot, and that's their largest problem. Even liberals don't believe them. Nobody believes them. They, they have lied so many times about so many things sure. that attacking someone else is a liar. I think so what happens? You know their unfair. brain. You know Brock. You know his, his rotting mind. What are they going to pull? Look, they're running an old game plan. They have a completely programmed scripted campaign. Sidney Blumenthal is petrified about uh, about uh, the fact that Bernie is going to challenge them. Sidney Blumenthal is petrified about the fact that Cornell West is one of those 
who uh, has been asked to second the nomination of Bernie Sanders, and therefore he's going to have a national audience to talk about the Clintons' record on civil rights, which is abysmal, to talk about their dog whistle politics. The fact that Bill Clinton once said to Ted Kennedy, you know, a few years ago, this boy Obama would be getting our bags and getting us coffee. So uh, that's the real Bill Clinton. The Bill Clinton who signed Three Strikes You're Out. The reason so many young black Americans are incarcerated for possession of small amounts of drugs is so Bill Clinton could be looked tough going into his night. And by the way, that's what's so crazy. Him. They hang out with Grand Dragons. They really are the scuzzy end of the Dixie Mafia, literally. For folks that don't know what that is, I mean, I live here, okay, I know. And it's just crazy. You get around Dixie Mafia people, and I've been around them, and most of the top Democrats in town, I mean, they are the most racist people I've ever seen. And well, you're just like... It's like, what on earth? And then, and then, then oh, I tell you, boy, I tell mo you. Mo most African Americans don't know the story of Ricky Ray Rector. Ricky Ray Rector was a retarded African American man convicted in Arkansas. Hillary pushed Bill to execute him on the eve of the New Hampshire primary in 1992 so that they could look tough on law and order. Every African American in this country needs to know the name of Ricky Ray Rector before this election. And by the way, we're not just saying this. I don't just to win political points just say they're racist. I, I mean, the Clintons are anti-human scum. I mean, they are, is there anybody worse than them except maybe Kim Jong-un? Well, the Bushes are in the same league. I, I think the Bushes are actually uh, a bigger criminals in terms of the overall- well, They got a lot of the Nazi money. That's why they're really well, they, a secret. They, they, they start with uh, Prescott Bush, the patriarch of the Bush family, the U.S. Senator. They held the war chest for Hydra. Yeah, he was basically financing the Third Reich's uh, war machine. Which was, symbolized as a Hydra. That people think that's Captain America, I'm saying that's actually the group. Yeah, uh, it is, uh, I think that, of course, the two families, the Bushes uh, and the Clintons, as you can see in both of these books, they're connected at the hip. It's one crime family. They're in it together, folks. That's why Bill says... Uh, pardon me, uh, George Bush says that Bill is like his brother, and that makes Bubba. Hillary like his sister-in-law. And Barbara Bush... Don't talk bad about, don't talk about Clinton, she's my son. Yeah, he says that, she says that Bubba is the fourth Bush brother, God forbid. Both the books of Clinton's War on Women and Jeb and the Bush Crime Syndicate are carried to forces. I thought I knew it all, and I read these books and couldn't put them down. Give these to your friends and family to really understand this is one of the crime families that, that have merged together ruling us and the bushes did it off stolen nazi loot they got to keep we'll be back tom in england you're gonna be up first then chris eric is that eric or eric my eyes are going jim david 800-259-9231 800-259-9231 uh we're gonna be taking your calls for the balance of the hour and then we're gonna obviously be doing some tape shows and things here while Roger Stone is visiting in Austin, Texas, we're going to be doing some Facebook mentions uh, and other viral videos. A lot of breaking news here in the next few days at InfoWars.com. I do want to go to your phone calls, but coming up in the next longer segment after we take some calls, Roger, you've got more to cover. Tell folks what it is. Well, I want to talk about uh, uh, about the convention. I want to talk about the uh, the uh, the way this I see this playing out. We should talk a little bit about the importance of the vice presidential nomination. All right, we're going to talk about it all. Tom in Her Britannic Majesty's Albion, you are on the air from jolly old England. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. I mean, Sir Alex, Lord Alex. Thank you, sir. And Roger. Hi, Roger. I've got a comment, uh, a little sort of an anecdote, I suppose, and a couple of important questions for Roger. Sure, go ahead. Trump. Um, so I was, uh, this was a BBC documentary about five, Six years ago, it was about reality TV, and there was a large segment on uh, The Apprentice. And they interviewed a former contestant, and she was saying how, how great Trump was to work with, and how he was always jovial, smiling, and everything. And she she just told a story about how he came in jovial and smiling as usual, and then the producer told him the narrative. And the narrative was Trump is in a terrible mood. Something such and such happened, and blah blah, blah on, on the way. And uh, you know, uh, and and he apparently got into character, you know, like that. 
you know, it was... So sure, surprising. I mean, he's been part of reality TV, and I can tell you, folks, it's almost all completely fake. Trump admits that. So here's your question is, is this just an actor we're seeing? And my answer, before we talk to the real insider, is it doesn't matter. This stuff he's doing is irrevocably damaging to the New World Order criminal project. That's why I'm supporting it, but I think he's gamed them. And I've talked to a lot of other insiders, and you didn't tell me this, that knew him years ago that said, look, Trump's more anti-New World Order than you are. He's just kept it secret, and he's like a sleeper cell. Is that an accurate statement, or is that? Uh, I think he's had consistent views for 30, 40 years. 30 he's... years ago, he was against NAFTA yet. Right. He was against NAFTA. He was, he, he was suspicious of NATO and the fact that it's costing us a fortune and our allies are not paying their fair share. It made sense, perhaps, after World War II when we were wealthy and everybody else was broke. Now we're broke and everybody else is He's wealthy. a businessman and he thinks about Team America. But he, he's always thought that there, there is nothing new about his views. These have always been his views. He's always been an outsider. He's always scoffed at the, at the, uh, at the inside sure. Washington, New York elite. I can tell you this. He hated Washington. He hated going there. He hated the system. They know that, by the uh, way. There's no question. So he hasn't changed. And no, I think uh, the, the fellow you may have seen on The Apprentice may have been acting but the Donald Trump you see on the campaign trail, that's the real Donald Trump. Let me ask you Blunt, this, Tom. I and to the point. I kind of interrupted both of you, but, but I mean, is that your question? I was being presumptive, or is that it, Tom? Uh, it wasn't really my I mean, I've, I've got other questions. Go um, ahead. But, yeah, I, I, I was just going to say that um, not all of his views are consistent with what they were a few years ago. And in the context of him being an accomplished actor, I mean, I, mean, I understand that Roger... Stone says that what we're seeing now is the real Trump. What we're seeing then is was an actor, but how do we know that? I mean, that's the thing. But but I mean, my question to Roger, to Roger Stone uh, is: a few weeks ago, uh, he said that in a certain state there was uh, a million people who were fitted the profile of a Trump supporter. So my first question to him is. What is the sort of the source? What is that profile? Okay, the real quick, the second one, because we got to go to break and, and get to calls here, sir. I'm going to ask okay. quick questions. Go ahead. Yeah, look, I actually think this is a very important question, uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the Trump voter can be analytically profiled. We know exactly who she, he, and she are. Uh, and therefore, um, I think that one of the most important things that has to be done before this next election is the registration of one million new voters in the 10 swing states. But I thought there's already been two million more voters that voted Republican than normally, two and a half, well, But it? those are folks who are already registered and came to the process. They've just never voted in the primary before. I'm talking about registering one million totally new, new general election oh, voters. I think that's already happening. Let's talk about that when we come back. Tom, great questions. I just, uh, you know, we only spend so much time. More callers straight ahead. We're gonna go bam, bam, bam with your questions for Roger Stone. Stonezone.com, get both his books, The Clinton's War on Women, and. Jeb and the Bush crime family at InfoWarsStore.com and support the broadcast while you get your Hillary for prison shirt. I just love to see what Trump's doing. Roger Stone, I've been ranting here, but obviously I want to go back to calls. I want to know the essence of Trump because obviously I'm not a lesser of two evils person, but the Democrats are going for broke here. They're annihilating free speech. They have people with Mexican flags all over California beating up women, beating up families, the mayors are on the news saying it's a great thing. This is real news, you know, mainstream news on Infowars.com with just bizarre statements by these people that I don't even call the left because I'm, you know, what you call liberal on most issues, uh, but I'm for free market, Second Amendment and stuff like that. So I'm called the super right wing uh, extremist. No, I'm for free speech. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm the liberal, but they're so dangerous. They've got to be met. They've got to be resisted. It's so obvious that Trump is the only choice, and I think he should get two, three million new voters to come in and vote. And I think that is the initiative, reaching out to people of every race, color, and creed and saying, you know you're being scammed. You know this is a fraud. Don't be intimidated. Go register to vote and go after them. My concern is, and I don't want to discourage folks, is election fraud. We just saw an Austrian nationalist 10 points ahead in every big poll, and then he loses to the to the Green Party socialist people that actually said in a campaign ad, liking Austria is bad, Austria sucks in German. I I'm not joking. So what is this leftist self-loathing mental illness and how do we counter it? That's a lot of stuff, but that gestalt there, uh, I'm supporting Trump because his enemies are so bad regardless, but I believe he is the real deal and will deliver. I am, uh, 
I believe that in the last two presidential cycles, the Democrats have done a much, much better job of voter registration. The good news is, however, there are not a bunch of unregistered Democrats out there for them to bring in. Now, they can try to bring in illegals, and they have done that in some places, but... The Republicans have not done a good job of voter registration. Is that because of internal sabotage? No, I think it's actually because there was no market. Now, with Donald Trump as the head of the party, now suddenly there is a market. There are at least one million people in the 10 key states willing to become Republicans because they've been drawn to the party by Trump. They weren't interested for Mitt Romney. They didn't even vote four years ago. Those people can be located through a, a sophisticated analytic and modeling program and in the Floridas, and Ohio's, and Nevada's, and Arizona's, uh, and uh, Pennsylvania, and Florida, the key states, they can be brought to the polls. And what about just people that are patriots of every race, color, and creed that aren't liberal or conservative, that are just common sense, saying, hey, I, I, I'm doubling down. I'm going to go out and find four or five of my friends that are liberal on some issues but aren't suicidal for the country, and I'm going to take them by the hand and go get them to register to vote. Uh, look, I'm working with a group called the Committee to Restore America's Greatness. That's all they're going to do is locate and register one million new Trump voters. So that's the place to go to learn tips and what to do. Or to we, we will be rolling this out shortly. The Trump campaign has not announced a, ma a massive voter registration drive. I think it's an absolute necessity as a political professional, as someone who's a veteran of nine Republican presidential campaigns, starting with Nixon through Reagan, Bob Dole, still doing penance for helping the Bushes. That's why I had to write the book. Uh, I can tell you this is the key to victory. That's how close is go this is going to be. It's the only hedge against vote stealing by, by the Clinton machine. So I'm going to be putting my back into voter registration. A goal, very simple. One million new Trump voters. You can even call it something like red-blooded Americans. We're of every race, color, and creed. We love freedom, and we're for Trump. We're for the republic. Red-blooded Americans. Yeah. Meanwhile, you've got the never-Trump operation. Now, this just continues to confound me. Look, Bill Crystal is a friend of mine. I like Bill Crystal. We don't agree on hardly anything. He really should get out of politics and stick to starting wars uh, and writing because he's a writer. Here's the point. You telling me that the conservative Republican members of Congress, the people who gave us an 80% increase in our $13 trillion debt, they're worrying about soiling themselves by endorsing Donald Trump? Please give me a break. Or those who say, oh, he's not a conservative. Well, what kind of conservative are they? The kind of conservatives like George W. Bush, who tells us Islam is a peaceful religion and who brought us into an endless war with no point, or Donald Trump who says, let's find ISIS and destroy them. I know which kind of conservative I am. And they don't want the wars here. They just want to keep them going forever. I talked to the special ops guys, Delta Force, you name it, the Marines, uh, the Navy, all of them. They go, look, whenever they turn us loose, we wipe them all out. We, we have to sit there in bases and let them attack us. Well, the idea of a third candidate, an independent candidate, who now turns out to be a writer at the Weekly Standard, this is some kind of fraternity joke. Here are your choices. Hillary, Rotten, Clinton, or Donald Trump. Those are your choices. Terrific piece today by Richard Vigory, an old friend of mine. A real purist conservative, but who makes the case that the for show. conservatives, this is the only choice. Trump is the only choice. And the never Trump people need to get over it and get on board. Uh, we've got more to cover about the VP and stuff, but let's go to the calls. Uh, let's talk to Ben in California. He was at San Jose anti-free speech rally where a woman was beat up and the news said she deserved it. The mayor's like, you know, hitting the head with a Mexican flag and an egg in your face that cut it, get punched in the eye. A bleeding woman. And it's, 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 it's racially motivated. It's crazy. And, man, I love Hispanic people. That's not just like some, some you know, one-off. I mean, it's true. I like everybody, but I really like Hispanic folks, I like the culture, the food, everything. I don't like how Mexico's degenerated into a narco-terrorist state and how the culture pushed by the media is gangbanger, 18-year-old thugs who've been in and out of juvie hall running around beating up women. I, I mean, come on, folks. Are you really going to endorse a bunch of Mexican gangbangers beating up people? And, and, and I mean, come on, folks. I, I mean... Don't people understand that, uh, that that condoning this 
is going to create major division in this country and that that's why they're allowing this to happen and why they're endorsing it is to create silent, cloistered, white, fearful racism so that then that we can all be managed as racial groups like prisoners. I mean, I mean that's my view. I mean, but it's just it's going so far and, and we're going to go to Ben. I think it's a mistake. Here's why. Because at the end of the day, I think Hispanic voters care more about economic opportunity. They care about getting their piece of the American dream. They care about getting their piece of the economic pie. And the only person who's going to allow them to do that is Donald Trump. He's a job creator. He understands the economy. He's got a terrific tax reduction plan that is pro-growth and, and, pro, and very dynamic. Uh, and at the end of the day, Hispanic Americans can choose between opportunity and prosperity and hate because that's all they're churning out is hate well i'll say this when latin america was right wing it had some of the wealthiest countries in the world and sure they had some bad right wing groups there too that they exacerbate oh the right wing killed five thousand people the communists will kill like three hundred thousand in countries when they take over in latin america you know i'm not saying it's a lesser of two evils but i mean free market is what makes things operate it, it's all the countries that have it even a limited form are the ones that have jet airplanes and swimming pools and jobs and highways and a chance to get wealthy you bring in collectivism it's some kingpin who says he's a leftist in a red shirt sitting up in an armored compound while you live in a mud hut i, I mean i just latin america could be this giant glowing jewel and instead it's gone to hell in a handbasket and the leftists just want to keep everybody down. I mean, that's and people say, well, what about the left-right paradigm? It's been controlled because the right's been phony. But the establishment is going after humanity from a leftist perspective. I mean, look, Roger, you're involved in a lot of libertarian causes. I know you're involved in, you know, marijuana decriminalization. You have businesses in that. Oh, more power to you. You know, you're involved in a lot of stuff they call liberal. Uh, you know, you've gone after right-wing extremist candidates before yourself. I don't like that. I don't want monotheists telling me how to live, whether they're Christian or Muslim. Uh, so I really think it's about terms here. We are the classical liberals, the, the constitutionals. We're the real progressives. These people are a cult of control freaks. Yeah, I look at it in a slightly different way. At a certain juncture, I figured out that the, the left-right confrontation was really just a Hegelian device to distract us from the fact that there is an elite that is the, whose only interest is not ideological. They're neither left nor right. They play both sides. They're interested in control, power, and wealth. That's what they're interested in. Uh, and therefore, uh, I probably have more in common with many Bernie Sanders supporters than I do with some traditional Republicans. The truth is, however that this election is between the insiders and the outsiders. It's not between the Republicans and the Democrats like our past presidential elections. It's the Republicans and Democrats together versus Donald Trump and the people of it's the United States It's never been more naked because it doesn't matter he's worth $8 billion. He's never been part of their club. He's always done it on his own. He's, he's arrogant. He thinks he's smarter than them. Looks like he is. He's trying to come in and take over their whole pie. They don't know whether he's just taking it from them or is going to reform it. All they know is they've hijacked everything. They think it's theirs, and Trump's saying, no, it's not. Is that it? Well, what did Newt Gingrich mean when he was asked why the Republican, pardon me, why the Washington establishment so disliked Trump, and he said, well, he doesn't belong to the secret society. He's never taken the oath. He doesn't know the handshake. Now, maybe it was rhetorical. It wasn't. But maybe it wasn't. He is not part of the Council on Foreign Relations. He's not a member of the Trilateral Commission. And there is a sexual and a cultic aspect to all these clubs. There's a political one, but to get in deeper, there's another level. Like the average gang says, go shoot an old lady to become a maid member. When you get to skull and bones and stuff, no, you got to do something else to become a member, and it's sexual. Now, I'm going to leave it at that and go back to phone calls, but you're dead on. By the way, if you're a new viewer, let, let's find that. Newt Gingrich, Trump's never been part of the secret society. He said that on Fox News. It's not a joke. He really said that. So you're absolutely right. You crystallized it. This is really the end of an era. This is the fall of this corrupt group of insiders that have hijacked both parties. Trump realizes it's this moment in history. He's uncloaking as a patriot, making his move for nationalism to be George Washington part two. Is that accurate? I think that's exactly right. It's epic. Roger Stone's here with us. It's amazing. Uh, this is this guy, all, 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 all the angles he's got. Ben in California, thanks for holding. You're on the air from San Jose. Go ahead. How's it going, guys? Good, brother. Go ahead. Hey, I was just two things real quick. Uh, me and my girlfriend were Mexican, and we attended the Trump rally. It is the most disgraceful, embarrassing thing I have ever seen in my life, man. There's people getting beat up. Uh, 
police not doing anything to help anyone. I got everything on camera. Uh, I'm telling you, man, and the mayor, this is the mayor coming out and saying that Trump needs to be responsible for everything, and it's, it's all crazy, man. It, the second thing I, I think that so we take need... Take your time, because you're a witness to this, not just our cameras that are witnesses, uh, you know, to what happened. Describe, as just a citizen of America, white, black, Hispanic, you're just a human, you want to go hear Trump speak, whether you support him or not, you know, tell us if you do, you, you're go some people go just to hear and they get beat up, you know? Uh, so, so what was it like? What did you see? Okay, first of all, I'm, I'm a libertarian, and I just, I just support a lot of what he says. But as we stepped out, there was just total chaos. I mean, everyone was just talking mess to the Trump supporters, calling everyone racist. I mean, everything. Just We're going to show uh, some B-roll of that in the background. Tell, tell us what you witnessed. I just saw, I mean, we started walking to my car. I was with my two two-year-old son. And, I mean, we were just walking. I was recording everything. People were just talking mess to everyone. And then out of nowhere, someone, some guy got his Trump hat ripped off, some older white male, and they just started beating him. And I told my girlfriend just to go to the car, and I just wanted to stay there and record everything. And the police weren't even helping this man. I was screaming at the police to help him. I have everything on camera right there. I was screaming at the police to oh, help God. this man, literally five, five feet in front of the police. They, they were not helping this man. There was like 20 cops, and they were just staring at me. And this guy was just getting beat. And then I seen that happen like three other times because I stayed all night to, to, to record everything. And and the police were not helping anything. I don't know what the hell happened. This looked exactly like what happened in Baltimore. I mean, this is crazy right now, man. And God, they just I sucker punched that, that guy. Well, sir, let me tell you this. I want to get your information. Uh, do you have a YouTube channel? Because if you have this footage, police stand by uh, during racial attack. It should go viral. We need to expose this. This is crazy. Uh, and I've got to say, at a certain point, the Second Amendment's going to come involved here. When people are being attacked, uh, this is just amazing. Uh, so, so have you put your footage out yet, sir? No, I have not. But my second thing I was going to say, I think that we need a whole bunch of constitutionalists to go out. Because I was literally the only one, one of the only males out there that was trying to help these people getting beat up. I was trying to grab these people and get them away from all these crazy people. There's no one out there to help these people. I mean... I think we need a whole bunch of Trump supporters or people that support the Constitution to go out there and protect these people because these people are just, yep. I mean, this young boy, had, this young boy had a, a Trump sign and they ripped it up and, and he was just, he was just screaming at them like, this is my opinion. You guys are like, you guys are calling me racist. Like, I'm not even doing anything to you guys. I mean, I think we need people out there to protect these people, man. Like everyone that can still carry permits, anything, bring out a, a, a legal knife. I mean, if these people want to do something stupid, man, it's going to be on them. And I, in, in my well, eyes, here, here's the thing, sir. I hear you. The media is trying to spin this and trying to cover this up, and it's just out of control. The communists just want to have some giant civil war. And I look at our military, who on average, some of the most, you talk to top, top special forces people I know, and they just tell me, hands down, on average, you know, Hispanic Americans are the toughest, hardest fighting, smartest people we've got for this country. And then you've got this communist scum, brainwashed teenagers out here racially attacking white people because they have USA on their shirt. It, it is just a shame. And I, I hear you. If, if I was Hispanic, I would be ashamed of this. I'm ashamed of this as an America. Uh, but, but, sir, please, please get, get your – I'm going to put you on hold – uh, what we overnight at FedEx, whatever, but everybody that's listening that videotapes this stuff need to get it up. Do you have a YouTube channel? Can you get this out? Yeah, I could put it up on my YouTube channel. What is your YouTube channel? And we'll link to it as soon as you put uh, it up. Well, I, I actually, I just have a YouTube account. I don't have an actual channel, but I can make a channel and I can send well, you sir, guys. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to have most of my crews on vacation right now. I'm going to have Darren McBreen get your number from, um, from, John Harmon, and then we're going to call you in 10 minutes and, and, and work through this with you and, and get this footage uploaded and get it out, okay? Yes, sir. God bless you, Ben. Uh, go ahead, uh, Roger. Look, we should not be surprised that the Clintons are using thug tactics. They've used thug tactics their entire career. These are people who used Arkansas state troopers to have witnesses to their corruption and their sexual crimes beaten, who broke into people's houses, who burned people's houses down, drove people out of the country uh, for fear of their lives, uh, broke into people's cars, smashed their windshields, the slashed, their, slashed their tires, uh, killed their pets, threatened their children, threatened their children's friends. The Clintons are thugs. They are worse than the mafia. The bullying's over, though, and Donald Trump's the spearhead, like on an icebreaker. We're the ship. He's that big iron steel, you know, spike ramming through the ice. Is that it? That's why they're so apoplectic, because in a guy, they can't co-opt him. They can't silence him. 
This is like stepping in front of a moving freight train. The, the day of reckoning is coming, and Donald Trump is going to be the man who brings it. You know, throughout history, criminals, whether they're the communists, the Nazis, they always think they can overrun everybody. And at first they have victory, and they push, and they push, and all of a sudden, the sleeping giant awakens. And I can feel the sleeping giant isn't just awake now. It's awake, and it's pissed. Look, I, I've been through nine presidential campaigns. I have never seen anything like this. Reagan was as close as we got, but this is a real grassroots insurgency. I've never seen anything like it. You don't have to call the Trump people to show up. They show up on their own. You don't have to call them to remind them to vote. They show up to vote. I, I've never seen this kind of grassroots say, power. If ever. somebody just thinks they're going to punch me, I, I can't believe these folks don't fight back, though. But, but I guess they're smart like Gandhi. Well, look, I actually think, look, I'm against violence because any kind of violence will be blamed on Trump. No matter who started No, I get it. If no I fight back, I'll be blamed on it. So, sadly, you have to turn the other cheek. You have to avoid violence. I agree. Like Christ, not that Christ was a wimp. It was so manly to take it to show how bad they were. Again. So, at a certain point, I guess, you just absolutely show they did it by not fighting back. I just, I've never done that in my life. Violence is not it. the answer. It will not solve the problem. But the mainstream media will blame it on I'll just us. never let somebody punch me and I'll get punched back. I don't know how to do it, but I hear you. Well, either does Trump, I assure you. Uh, yeah, I love when they jump the stage trying to attack him. He doesn't run. He just pushes his Secret Service office ready to punch him. Look, look Donald Trump's taking his life in his hands. Every day goes out on the camera. I can tell he loves it, doesn't he? he? He's not afraid. He's not He's not living in fear. He's having the time of his life. And he's correct. This is not a political campaign. It's a movement. It's a movement to save America. Uh, and he's willing to risk his life for it. Uh, I just sent $1,000 to the Committee for American Sovereignty. One of the super PACs is supporting Trump that I do believe in, that unlike Great America PAC is not a ripoff. Uh, so, uh, Let's run by betting the felon, right? Yes, correct. Uh, look, you got, you've got Hillary Clinton sitting on $48 million in super PAC funds. And uh, that money, it was 80. She can raise much more. It is unlimited in terms of what she can get. We have to have these same groups. We have no choice. I, I'm just looking at that camera over there to the audience and just telling them, this is an epic time to be alive. I don't care what stinking color you are. We're all red-blooded. And I've always had this idea about, we're, you know, our color is red and taking the, the, the color red back from the communists and saying, you, know, you don't run the color red. Humanity, that's our color. That's our blood. The communists admit they love red to show red terror. They're going to kill everybody. Well, I got news for the reds. We're bringing red back, meaning you're the ones that are going to, get run over if you try to enslave us. This is the Republic of the United States of America. We are not going to die easy and go down without a fight, Roger Stone. Well, what I'm saying is, uh, never mind the red, you're not going to win this election without green. That's right. Uh, and therefore, yesterday's announcement that Tom Barrick, who is an L.A.-based, very close friend of Donald Trump's, runs a very successful real estate opportunity fund. He has started a super PAC. He's got an immediate $37 million in solid pledges from Trump supporters, that is a pivotal moment. The the Committee for American Sovereignty. So is the momentum one. building or feel? The, the, yes, and there's going to be a number of worthy groups, real groups, not ripoff groups like Great America PAC, the Ed Rollins, Jesse Benton operation. Ed Rollins, uh, longtime Republican operative, works for Teneo Strategies today. That means he works for the Clintons and his PAC, Great America is a front. It's a scam. I want to talk. I got to get calls. All this is golden. We got to do more interviews. Obviously, you're going to let us. I know you have no sleep waiting for your flight here, but we can do some more interviews and stuff for Sunday, right? Yes. Yes. Good, good. So there's going to be more Roger Stone, more exclusive here. I want to go to some phone calls right now. We'll do five more minutes in the next hour, and then we can go get some lunch here, and then we can uh, have uh, who is it taking over in the fourth hour today? That's going to be Anthony Gucciardi doing a great job. But before we do that, please buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com. I've skipped like three breaks today, which nobody else in the industry does. That's like $1,000 a minute we're losing. I can't help it. But just buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com. we got 20% off Survival Shield, 20% off uh, the Lung Cleanse. We've got uh, all these different specials that are running right now. We will sell out of lung cleanse by Monday, so take advantage of this 20% off. We have the new revolutionary air purifier that is available uh, at 25% off out of the gates. That's Alexa Pure Breeze uh, that is 
way, way, way lower than any other competition. There's no reviews yet because it's brand new, but I've been using it uh, here at the office uh, for a few months. I'm about to get some of my uh, home. They are simply amazing. They just came out, but I have one of the prototypes. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com for the nutraceuticals, or call toll-free, 888-253-3139. And whatever you do, because it's so much fun, it's gone from 1 in 25 Trump supporters on average at the rallies to 1 in 10. Now we're going for 1 in 5, where Hillary for prison shirts are just everywhere, lining the front row. It's making huge news. It's amazing. InfoWarsStore.com with a 4.9-star review out of a possible 5 that's a 90, what is it, 99% star. So please take advantage of that today. And the small profit we make funds this operation. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, or toll-free 888-253-3139. Let's go ahead and talk to Chris in Georgia. Then we'll go to uh, Erica in Oregon and others. Go ahead. Hello, Alice and Roger Stone. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, I have three questions, but I'm going to ask my first one now. If you have time, I'll ask the other one. I don't think Trump will be president because I believe the elite will kill him. Do you agree? I mean, I support him, but do you see him as president, given all the dangers he's been through? I mean, all the tweets and death threats and the little protection. Well, I mean, look, there, there's no doubt he's one of the bravest men ever alive in American politics. You know, he's not George Washington yet, but he's trying. Uh, so, yes, they want to kill him. They're openly. Glenn Beck's been suspended off Sirius XM. He's being because he does these little premeditated that somebody needs to kill Trump things. I'm not attacking Beck, but it's getting crazy. The New York Times says kill him. Um, they're allowing this. Facebook allows hundreds of pages calling for his death for months. Uh, Roger Stone, this guy's got a good point. Chris's got a good point. Yeah, no, I think it's a very legitimate concern. Look, I, I have been banned on CNN because my views are politically incorrect. But a fellow named Wilson, a Republican consultant from Florida, he tweets out, somebody needs to put a bullet in Donald Trump. He still appears regularly on CNN. So once again, you see the double standard. Yeah, there, somebody's put handcuffs on his ass. Yeah, well, at least he had to get a visit from the Secret Service. He, he doesn't have a right to say as a media person, go kill somebody. Listen, if I got up on air and told my listeners, I got enough, they're great people, but the small percentage are crazy. If I said go kill somebody, they try. And, and Glenn Beck knows that. It's not like he's an average guy saying somebody should put a bullet in him. He knows damn well he's got enough lunatics listening. They'll go out and try it. I'm sorry, Roger. Uh, look, I, I don't disagree. So let's come back to your question because it's crucial. Who the vice president is is the central question. I think Trump's greatest insurance policy against assassination is picking a vice president whose views are almost identical. To More him. hardcore. Don't have a George Herbert Walker. No, because then that's an open invitation. Whether it's Lyndon Johnson, whether it's George Bush, that's an open invitation for uh, for a... Roger guy. Stone is on fire despite the fact he was stuck in an airport with summer storms. All night with no sleep, he's here fighting for the Republic. Fourth hour straight ahead, Infowars.com forward slash show for free feeds. Chris, thanks for the call. Other callers, stay with us.